Are you always coming up with ideas? Do you marvel at successful business owners? Do you hate being told what to do? Ever take things apart just to see how they work? Are you a dreamer? If you've answered yes to any of these questions, this podcast is for you. Welcome to the Entrepreneurial Enclave with Kevin Wortham. The podcast that focuses on building, maintaining, pivoting, planning, and investing in you, the entrepreneur. But first, a word from our sponsor. Tapes and Specialties is the world leader in tape manufacturing and specialty conversion with over 40 years of experience. In addition to our pro brand of high quality specialty adhesive tapes, we provide contract converting services that help improve your profitability, streamline your supply chain, and reduce inventory cost. We offer the most complete range of converting capabilities in the industry, such as cloth tape, double coated tape, specialty tape, paper tape, masking tape, vinyl tape, carton sealing tape, adhesive transfer tape, duct tape, phone tape, electrical tape, filament tape, foil tape, reflective tape. And the tape just keeps on rolling. Visit us online today at www.protapes.com or call us at 800-345-0234. Pro Tapes, it's just how we roll. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another fantastic episode of the Entrepreneur Enclave, Life's Coming Attraction. Listen, I am so excited this evening. I have my two, I have my best friend and my new bestest friend, if that ever makes any sense. Tona Buck from Trenton, New Jersey. Kimberly Harris from Washington, D.C. Ladies, welcome to the platform. How are you this evening? I am fantastic, Kevin. Thank you for having me on. Yes. I get excited when I be with you. <laughs> Absolutely. Kimberly, talk to me. How are you? I'm fine, Kevin. Glad to be here. Thank Ab- you so much. Absolutely. So you guys are both doing wonderful work in the area of domestic violence and being survivals or survivalists. What does it mean to be a survivalist, a survival person? What does that mean? Anyone? You can go first, Kim. Kim you can go. You, I, I talk a whole lot, Kim. You can go first. <laughs> I'm gonna get a Kevin on me. I'm gonna get. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate that Kevin bold enough to put me on an interview with somebody else. He know I don't shut up. So Kimberly, here, I'm, you, you are our guest. Go ahead, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kimberly, you well, are. Kimberly, you are our guest. Our guest. Okay, go ahead, Kimberly. <laughs> okay. Our okay. guest. I feel so special right the now. It's only again. Yeah. So. Uh, being a survivor is uh, is courageous. Um, I can't explain exactly um, how much goes into reforming your life from violence of you know of a magnitude of domestic or sexual assault. Um, it's not an easy walk. It's not an easy journey. Uh, I think God gives us the strength to carry on in the ways He wants us to carry on and reach out to others that are in similar predicaments, but. I know with myself, um, survivorship is one of the things that um, I had to do. Um, I saw so much despair. Uh, as I said on the last podcast, Kevin, um, you know, sitting in a domestic violence shelter, you know, trying to get your life restored, trying to save your life from, you know, additional harm is no joke. And, uh, you know, once you, I think once you become, more, um, you know, more, I, I guess it's comfortability, I would say, with yes. knowing who you are, what you are, and what the direction you want to go into. And that has a lot of phases to it. It all depends on the survivor, too, yes. and, and the energy that's in, in the, you know, in the output that somebody wants to put into reforming their life. Yes. yes. Um, so survivorship to me was, um, it's one of these things again that you know you got to want to put in a lot of work, and I think you know in in any situation when you experience trauma, uh, like we have, um, you know we that's the first thing to overcome. Yes, is to understand what what your barriers are and what your outcomes you know have to be in order to succeed and bridge over to your triumph. Yes, And I know that's one of the things I, you know, I talk to my women about at Women's HQ here in Washington is like, we have to now, 
you know, kind of desensitize what we're doing here. We've gotten through the trauma. We've gotten away from, you know, the violence of the attack. And now we're, we're centered and we're motivated to be in a space where we can collect our thoughts, we can get it together, and we can, we can understand us <laughs> as a people. We yes. can understand us yes. individually. We can now understand what motivates us and what we want to do. Like, you know, everybody else gets to choose whatever else they want to choose to do in life. Uh, so the survivor. So, you know, getting that kind of freedom and getting motivation from others and support from others that, you know, can can do it on the clinical side to help you through the therapeutic side of that to bridge over to the crime side is, is a remarkable thing. And that's survivorship at its best for me. Yeah. All right. Is that, are you asking me the same question, Kevin? Oh, absolutely, Tony. <laughs> Wait, we're similar. I'm similar to Kim. My my definition, because I'm getting, I'm tattooed everywhere, but one of the things that um, I have on my arm, I have I survived, and I have three dots, and it's a butterfly with the you know sexual abuse ribbon in the inside, and it and it's and the three dots means my past, present, and my uh, future, right? So when I think about survival, I think about something traumatic happened to me that I did not deserve. Something that I had to identify, something that I had to heal from, something that I had to, at one point in my life, share with one person or one million, like my crazy behind, but I had to share with someone and being able to be put in a place where I could take my power back. Yes. That's the part for me. I needed to take everything those men took and did to me back little by little, my self-esteem, my worth, my beauty my inner peace, my joy, my every, for the first time that man touched me at three years old, he literally stopped and took every good thing away from me. And I did not ask him to do it. I did not, I did not deserve for it to be, for it to be done to. Yes. Um, it was, it was traumatic from the first touch to the hundredth touch. I don't even know how many touches in between three and seven years old that this man touched me. So let me, and I like to introduce myself this way, Kevin. Yes. Hello, my name is Tony Buck. I'm a sexual abuse survivor and advocate. So while we're talking about, and also domestic violence too, but that's how, that's the one main thing that I need people to understand. When I say that I'm a survivor, that means that I, I am so, so, so far from totally being healed. Yes. I really think that, I believe that the trauma is so real that, um, that I will always be in a position that I will have triggered. Um, what I love about being a survivor is that I've learned to put coping mechanisms in place and I've learned how to educate other women and men about um, living their lives, that they can have their life back, that they can have their power back, that they can have their joy back, that they can, that they can live. Because once that person touches you, there's a part of your soul that dies. Yes. And you got to get it back. Little yes. by little. Oh That's why it's so good to talk about this and, to, and connect with other people that have um, experienced a um, similar situation. Yes. No, no, no. Kimberly, I, I follow you now. Thankfully, since our last episode, I follow you on Facebook and thank you for your support. Follow me on the entrepreneur enclave page. I, I, and, and help me out. You're doing some work now with the NFL. Yeah. Okay. You, you want to, can you share about that? What you're doing with the NFL? Um, I can share a little bit. Yes. Um, it's, it's, well, actually it's a program that I've written myself. Yes. Um, which um, includes sexual harassment in the workplace. I talk about sexual harassment in the workplace. Yes. As we um, as we know, you know, sports entertainment. Um, a lot of the players, coaches, and you know, staff have a real, real, real uh, need to understand what the red flags are. Yes. Of sexual harassment and um, you know, abuse. Yes. <laughs> like people don't think about abuse in the workplace, but it is, it's real. And, um, you know, when we have power over people, some of us don't know how to correct, correctly administer power over people in yes. a constructive, organized way. Yes. And so, um, you know, I kind of come in and I talk to, uh, a lot of variations of different levels of individuals within the NBA. Yes. Um, I hope we one day we'll do that with the NFL. But okay. um, we talk about these things that are red flags. We yes. talk about these things like, you know, my new things like to others, which, um, you know, saying to a young woman, 
um, you know, I think you're, I think you're beautiful is, uh, okay with some, with some women. Some women would take offense to that. Yes. Um, I'm not beautiful. <laughs> I'm a professional. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. there's a different tone you have to take in the workplace that you just don't do in the public, you know, in the general public. Yes. Um, when we talk about things like, uh, uh, Tonya, ready? Tona. 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 I'm sorry, sweetheart. Tona. That's Tona okay. just spoke about um, touching other people. People have, some people have, you know, they have, they live in a box. Yes. Mm-hmm. You don't touch me in the mm-hmm. workplace. You don't touch me in a way where I feel like I'm comfortable. You don't mm-hmm. touch me in a way where you hoover over me um, and you, mm-hmm. you know, caress me or you mm-hmm. rub me in a way we we're not that we're 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 just not we're not that connected yes yeah um a lot of times people and some people unfortunately it's gotten so bad um sexual harassment in the workplace has gotten so bad and you know uh dating is not allowed in a lot of the workplace workspaces um you know uh you know off even if you're off duty you know um you you still you know that's still in a clause in many people's contracts that they can't they can't associate yes um they, you know and it gets a little confusing sometimes because i think people want to you know be able to respect each other's space and be able to work as co-peers together and you know be in a comfortable space while we're here eight hours a day yes. but you know that doesn't exist in some in, in a lot of spaces, especially in the sports world. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a lot of lot a lot a lot a lot of problems. A mm-hmm. lot of ways. So um, I can't go too much into it, but I will say um, NBA is one of the, the very least that is is progressing. Eventually, we'll get to you know we'll get it'll get larger. We'll expand with it. But for right now, you know they're doing it little by little. Yes, and you know mm-hmm. they just want to get. Um, you know, it, 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 just put your, just, just think about it if it was you, right? You're in a space where all you see is influence, money, and power. Yes. Yeah. Right? And well, it right. And it's like, well, some people can handle it, some people can't. And now we're in, we're seeing young millionaires that are making their legacy. On and on and off the court. Yes. You know, um, some of them have lucrative contracts that that draw in millions and millions of dollars for. Them. And one one flip up. Yes. One flip up. Mm-hmm. Like dating someone that you're not supposed to be dating yes. in the workspace, or either you know saying something to someone that's harassing in the workplace, or bullying someone in the workplace. Those are no nos. Yes. Those are no no. So some people have to be not retrained on that because they're they're aware that you know you shouldn't do those things. But sometimes people's personalities there's so many variations of personality yes. of people that we have to just make sure that everybody stays in unison with one another and respect one another in the workplace. Yeah. No. So, ladies, um, re- respect yeah. me. Let me ask this question: How did we begin to? No- are we normalizing the? the understanding about sexual harassment and sexual abuse and domestic violence, are we normalizing that or people are just, be, are just, are just coming to grips with it? Is this, I don't think that, go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't think that we're normalizing, normalizing it. I just think that it's, it's such a topic that people don't want to talk about. You need to understand that um, sex is a billion dollar yes. <laughs> industry yes. in, you, in the United States. Do you understand that? Yes. So from, from, Day one, up to now, women have been um, objectified, women have been raped, women have been used, women have been able to, um, men have had control over women, men have had power over women. So this has been going on for years and years and years. So it's normal, it's, it's been normalized for so long. The one thing that I appreciated was when the Me Too started coming out and they, they, and they started closing down all those stores because these men were, you know, um, raping and um, raping, not, yes. not only harassing, but raping their employees because That's they right. were in a higher power. Yes. So therefore, I, I think what's going to what's happening, what needs to continue to happen, 
is that we need to stop being ashamed to talk about it because every because let me tell you one thing for me I'm an eye person and I've met thousands of um, me too the, the, the thing is that I need for people to understand especially males is that when they victimize us either physical, physically or emotionally that it's a shame on us even though we didn't do anything to deserve it so we we want to I need you to understand one other thing too. A lot of times, even when women do come out, Kevin, yes. and say that this person did something to me, they are being victimized all over again. Just yeah. say that I said that somebody raped me. I'm in an NFL right now, and I say, well, I'm, oh, girl, I'm, oh, I'm on my job. I'm, I'm on a date. I could be in high school. I could be at a college party, and somebody raped me. I, and these women get re-victimized all over again, and a lot of us see them get re-victimized. But we're really scared to say anything. When I say be victimized all over again, you go to the police, you say you've been victimized. Okay, so now they got to figure out your past. Did you have sex before? Were you ever a virgin? Did you drink too much? Did you have on something short? What was it about you that you did to make this person victimize me? Because something is wrong with them. So with that said, we women have for many years to stay in the closet and, even, and live with the shame that we should not have to um, have um, endured because it wasn't our fault but also scared to bring it up because, again, we're going to get re-victimized. So what needs to be done is what we're doing right now is having an open conversation and they're saying enough. It's enough that we're not going to openly say that this is happening not only in the NFL and football and uh, basketball, but in high school and in college. And when I go to the bar, if I go in, men, women are justified. And yes, so one of the right. things that they, 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 they look at us as a sex symbol. We, that, that's why... I, that's why we have so many issues. One of the most important things that I I did when I was younger, I was a program for um kids that 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 yes that that kids are going to school right I'm um, going to college anyway. So I, I don't I don't even want to go do all that. But it was a really good program um educating girls about how to protect themselves going to college right. And so one of the things I like to do you know a follow up and ask them what else can I do better. And this is a true statement. And I need for every mother who is raising a child a male. We teach our daughters, for the most part, hopefully, how to protect themselves. But we need to really teach our males at a young age what's right and what's wrong. Like, I had my, my son is 64. He's a basketball player. And my and my my advice was the same thing to him as I gave my daughter. If you say no, it's rape. Son, if you say, if she says no, it's rape. I don't care. Don't have sex with her when she's drunk. Don't have sex with her when she can't consent. Because if she talks around the next day and did not um say that she, um, Gave you the um, green light to go. It's rape. So that's one of the things that we do. We raise our daughters and swear, uh, swear our boys. No, no. They need to be educated at a very young age what it is to be to harass a woman. You can't go around and say, oh, you look good in that girl. Or you look nice in that. that. That's disrespectful to women. We are not on that. And, we, and many of us don't want it. And for those who do want it, more power to them. But you need to be, they need to be safe. Our boys need to be educated just as well as our girls need to be educated. And it starts by us having an open dialogue like we're doing right now. Yes, love it, love it. Kim, and let me say this, ahead, Kevin. Yeah, go ahead, please, Kim. I mean, Kimberly. We um we just experienced here in Loudoun County, Virginia. Loudoun yeah. County, yeah. Virginia, one of the most influential communities in this area, um, wealthy, influent. Mm -hmm. We just experienced a young man. Now these are teenage. These are teenagers in a high school. He was an abuser. Yes. Okay. He was 17. He was clearly an abuser. Why I say that is so he is in a bathroom attacking a 16 year old. A teacher walks into the, to the restroom, it's in a female restroom, she walks into. She says she stated to the police she sees two sets of legs. And she didn't think mm -hmm. anything mm -hmm. of it. Because they were in the stall, and that's what high school kids do. Yeah. So she never reported it. She left him alone. And mm. these, and, and then this young woman comes to her parents and says, I was raped. Wow. In the girl's room. I was mm. raped. Okay. So, of course, her parents go to the police. The police go to the school. The school board puts his the police back mm. and said to them, like, we have to investigate. But mm -hmm. there's rules of the school board, mm -hmm. of the administrators of the school board that have to be met first. By 
the time they were able, the police were able to get a, a to get a solidified search warrant to go in there to interview witnesses to uh, collect DNA samples and and everything they do in those rape cases. Guess what? Everything was cleaned up. Yep. Everything everything was disposed of, and the young man. Who was who was the who was her um her who was her abuser? He got removed from that school into What's another happened? school, and guess what happened in the new school? He was he did the was same thing again. The same thing. Wow. The predator. You're up to up to racist. Wow. Serial wow. racist. And now the school board members have been dismantled. They've yes. been fired. They've been and and rightfully so. And the police is thinking about bringing charges against the school board members that mm-hmm. were involved with pushing the police back from, from in, you know, in, um, heading out their investigation. Yes. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's awful. It's at the school level, and we're not even doing it in there. Like, we're not going in on the inside and telling these administrators that, listen, you need to bring the awareness here first. Yes. Because... It happens here every single day. Yes. Every day. You just don't have the courageous young men. Again, I'll say young men and women are getting abused. Yes. Yeah. Now, let, you, can we, can we, well, go ahead. Well, I want to ask two questions. Before we okay. get too deep into continuous conversation, I want you both to take 30 seconds and introduce yourselves and talk about the, the various companies that you run. Because, you know, I want you I want the folks to know that. Uh, can you go first, Tona? Okay. Yes. Uh, again, my name is Tona Buck. I'm a sexual abuse survivor, and I am an advocate. I am also the founder of Old Devising Over Sexual Abuse. This will be our sixth um, sexual assault. Uh, let me go back. This will be our sixth worldwide. I'm lying. Is this our seventh? Worldwide sexual assault walk. Um, I get to, uh, I do a couple of days. I'm a consultant for Yale University. I'm an author. I have um, three books that's published. One of them is called That Second. It's about my life. Um, very insightful if you want to know what it's like to be a three-year-old being victimized by a grown man. Um, what else do I do? Uh, I don't. I do a couple of things, but those are the most important things that I need to um, bring to the front right now. Uh, sexual Assault Walk is this year will be April the 15th. It's a worldwide sexual assault walk. Sexual Assault Walk is virtual. You can um, get more information at 609-331-7282 or tonabuck.com or tonabuck Instagram, tonabuck Facebook. Tonabuck is everything is um, open, it's public. Please reach out because I need support because I need your state and I need your country to be represented. That's it. Okay, Kimberly, <laughs> your turn. Thank you, Tona. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Um, yes, I'm Kimberly Harris. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Women's HQ. Uh, we're a nonprofit here in Washington, D.C. that services uh, women in homeless shelters, um, in DV shelters, actually, domestic violence shelters um, in the city of Washington that have experienced domestic violence, sexual assault, and we are now um, servicing sex trafficking victims Ooh. Um, in the space, yeah. Oh, and wow. that's, a, that's a growing community. Yeah. Also mm-hmm. um, yeah, well... You know, I, as the CEO, I have the charge of leadership. Um, I expand uh, programs that help with the health and wellness umbrella that we have under uh, Women's HQ that actually, um, you know, solidifies the victim, takes them, and, you know, curates their mind to where it needs to be in the direction of solidifying the trauma. Um, That's the first place you have to start. Anybody that's in trauma, it's not going to be successful at any, doing any of this until their mind is right. Mm-hmm. So we get the women in a place where the trauma is, you know, is 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 actually met with uh, clinical support. Um, we don't do in-house clinical support, but we do uh, bridge them over to some of the community centers and some of the uh, medical uh, hospitals that do have psychiatric outpatient behavioral health uh, units. Uh, we also, um, under our health and wellness, we offer uh, art therapy, music therapy, dance therapy, which are therapeutic to survivorship. Um, and it offers these women an opportunity to come, um, get out of the shelter space, and actually, you know, some of them think of it as, oh, well, I'm dancing today, or I'm singing today, or I'm 
you know, I'm, I'm creating a masterpiece today, but it's actually a method of clinical support that offers their opening up mm-hmm. to the trauma, to release the tension of the trauma that goes inside of our survivorship heads every single day. Mm-hmm. Just like uh, Tona was saying about the red flag. Yes. Um, the red flag of trauma trigger or mm-hmm. they are horrendous. You yes. deal with it every day. Yes. Um, PTSD, depression, anxiety. Yes. They'll yes. will be with you for the rest of the your life. Your life. Um, so we ha- we give them coping mechanisms, like yes. you mentioned. And we, we teach them how to then go into uh, what we offer as our second tier, which is our career enhancement piece. And that is with our uh, very, very, um, our sponsorship with... Um, LinkedIn, D.C., is, like, unmatchable. Um, they have uh, one-on-one coaching sessions with women who want to get on to the LinkedIn platform like every professional in America does. And mm-hmm. they're going to offer them free membership to do that, to actually navigate the space to become, you know, the entrepreneur they may want to become, yes. or, you know, and utilize that through marketing skills, you know, through um, LinkedIn. Offer them, you know, the avenue to actually, you know, um, sell their goods and products on LinkedIn. Um, offer them a way to network on LinkedIn. Offer them a way to create their, you know, their resume on LinkedIn. Um, there's, there, that is one of the most, you know, beneficial pieces to our career enhancement. And we are very proud to have that partnership with LinkedIn DC. Um, we need to get these women back to work in a, in a meaningful way, a workable yes. way. Um, we don't just want survivors to get back into the workforce and just be told what to do. Now's the time to redirect them and ask them what they want to do. Yes. Do we want to go back to school and obtain our, you know, our education that we didn't meet when we were with our abusers? Do we mm-hmm. want to now, you know, maybe get certified in, in a specific field? Do we want to, you know, maybe we need more of, you know, more support in letting us know and redirecting us how we get to where we want to to meet our goals. And it's just like every other red-blooded American does every single day after they, you know, just go about their educational means. Maybe some, you know, don't always education for everyone. So maybe they might want to do something else. But it's not telling them what they need to do. asking them what they need to do yes. nice. um, because they've been abused. <laughs> they're abused. They're abused survivors. Yes. And yeah. abuse comes in various ways where it can be, it can be really traumatizing. It can take you under. If it's mm-hmm. not properly controlled and it's not properly met with the right support. Uh, it- but lastly, in our, um, in our third tier, I wrote a program called Work to Well. Oh my God. This is my baby. Okay. Talk to my women all the time about investments. Now, I'm not just talking about going to a nine to five, getting paid, you know, you paying your bills and then you might have a little bit left over. You might put $10 in your savings account. You might put $5 in an account across the street or around the corner. I'm talking about substantial wealth. I'm talking about investing. It's like, you know, getting a workable wage. Like going to work and working for you, <laughs> like making it work for you, whatever that is, and taking that money and and researching, doing your homework. What what is a good investment? What is a bad investment? What you know? Do I buy stocks and bonds anymore, or do I look at the stock market and do I look at how I can become a stakeholder into a company? You know these things that you didn't think about. You didn't think about when you had somebody else controlling your mind, the finances, and yeah. everything else. Now you can think about it. Yes. And you want to invest not only in yourself, but we're talking, you know, a lot of people who have children. We're talking survivors who have children. What are you going to leave your kids? What are you going to leave your children after you, after, you, after you leave this earth? We talk about leaving legacy and leaving wealth. Right. So. That's one of the biggest 
pieces of my program that I love and I, I enjoy teaching. I teach it myself because I wrote it myself. And mm-hmm. I think, you know, um, there's no better, you know, instructors on any of this as people with lived experience because exactly. we're, we are really passionate about what we do. Yes. 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 Now, question for either one of you ladies. Is, is there a particular group that is that sees uh, more violence uh, or abuse amongst themselves than any other group? Um, do you want to talk about this? Um, African American. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let, me, yeah. let, me, let me just say this. So, so let me go from the um, sexual abuse because one of the things that Kimberly is saying, um, you know, that she said we're passionate because this is the connection. I need you to understand this, Kevin. A lot of us that were sexually abused as um, or raped as children or um, teenagers. We end up becoming, um, it, we end up in the best of uh, metabolic um, relationships. And let me tell you why. They can smell us. These men <laughs> or these women can smell us. They can smell our brokenness. They can smell our most of the thing. I told you, once that person touched you one time, I don't care if you'll never tell anybody, the residue is still there. And these soldiers can smell us. I don't care how smart you are, how pretty you are, how intelligent you are, how booming your body is. It, you, if, if you have been touched, if you have been raped, if you have been violated, many of us, many of us end up attracting that type of energy. And I don't care how great we are, there is something about that type of energy in a narcissist. I'm just saying that's an adult. Yes. So one of the things, one of the things like being sexual abuse um, is very prevalent in the black community is because we don't have a lot of male figures, right? And that's number one. Number two is that our issue um, in, with, with abuse that end up a lot of times with domestic violence is that um, we have this horrible thing that I am trying to break. And I said every time I'm on a platform or every time I get to speak about it, what's done in the house that's not, cannot, will not, shall not stay right. in that house. They can't stay in the house anymore. Jesus saying how that little boy was a serial rapist came in place to place. These uh, these people, is, when they find out that kids or uh, their child has been victimized, they either don't tell anybody or they don't they don't let that child be around a um, predator anymore, and they send them right up the street to the next uh, family. And so because of that, you have generations of children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren being victimized by the great-grandfather or the great-grandmother or the uncles or the aunts or because nobody wants to talk about it and everybody wants to um, um, keep what's done in the house, things in the house and all that mess. That is something that we need to break as African Americans, and because we don't have that support system, because we are, for some reason, very ashamed to talk about these subjects. White America, I did a documentary called "Why We Didn't Tell." Ten African Americans has never been done in history, sharing our stories about being victimized and our survival. I looked at thousands and thousands and thousands of documentaries before I made this documentary. Not one there, all black ones. You understand me? Because yes. we don't talk about it. That's why it's so powerful. Um, but it's right and tell it's on um it's on YouTube. Really good warrior sharing their stories. But because we don't do therapy, we don't do certain things, we don't talk about certain things, a lot of times we can't change the generation. It just goes down generation to generation. And that is the saddest and that is the most powerless thing we can do as African Americans is to keep the secrets and not be I don't do you know how secret it can, if it is to be you are getting beat by a man or a woman mm-hmm. and you don't want the shame don't you don't want to tell anybody? Because you feel you feel guilty because they're most likely narcissists, the people who are already already oh my God, please stop. The red flags that were already there when they first started off saying, you know, you're pretty and they get you or whatever, then it's so fast how they turn even the predators in the home, they groom us. Because back through the whole thing it'll be a long story. They groom us, be it if they are um, domestic violence or if it's predators. They groom us and they know exactly who to get and it has nothing to do with if you're not a good person or you the best or you smarter or whatever. It's just something about that sick individual. They just have their their vultures. They just have their eyes on certain people. And I lied to you not. The survival from any of any of those type of um, situations is harder than living. Oh, I'm gonna say that again. <laughs> wow. It's harder than living sometimes because that pain and that hurt and that in that and that brokenness is so real that many of these individuals contemplate suicide, attempt suicide, or, or do suicide. And if they're not there physically, 
their souls or on respirators for the rest of their lives if they are not in a position where they could talk and share what they've been through. I'm sorry. I'm finished. Go ahead. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You know I was talking about, you know this is my heart work. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Wow. So, so la- ladies, what does what does the arena look like going forward? Are more people coming forward? Are more people giving you support? Are more folks saying we need more like you at the forefront? Well, let me say this. I live in Washington, D.C., where all the policies and all the politicians thrive every day. Yes. Um, those people we elect in office sit right around the corner from where I live. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, listen, I've been to the White House conference. I've been to the White House. I've talked to several politicians. Uh, even in the White House level, I've I've spoken to the president about how very impactful even we were doing this uh, hunger, nutrition, and um, food, hunger, and nutrition White House conference back in September of last year. And one of the things that came up at the conference is that, you know, okay, how does that impact, uh, you know, sex survivors and sexual assault survivors and domestic violence survivors. Uh, well, okay. Like when you flee your abuser, you have nowhere to go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and in most of the bigger cities like New York City, like Washington, D.C., Chicago, you know, Philadelphia, I mean, we're talking cities that have now been split. Yes. Split the gender side cities that are now financially, if you're not already, you know, packing a whole bunch of money in your wallet, how do you want to, how do you want to get an average one bedroom apartment in in inner city anymore? And knowing that we don't have enough support. And one of the things I said, and I echo loud is that we need to stop with the politics and start getting to the people. Mm -hmm. We need to get the services to the people. And the only way people with the boots on the ground, like we are, Mm -hmm. um, these, you know, we need to get to these survivors. We need to get services. Because let me say this. DV shelters, homeless shelters, whatever you want to call them, they can't do it all. Mm-hmm. Their main focus is to house people. And that mm-hmm. is a struggle within itself. Mm-hmm. To house a whole lot of traumatic folks walking around, survivors walking around the building, not knowing where the next mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Mentally, we're, you know, you may not be all there, but you would think people say, oh, well, why doesn't the shelter offer counseling? Why don't they do this? Why don't they do that? Do you know it's just a battle making sure people get in and out of a building without bringing in extra people? Yeah. <laughs> Filling stuff. Yeah, they, listen, it's a whole Filling thing. You know, Wild fighting thing. amongst themselves. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot that goes on in those shows. Yep. So when you talk to people about, you know, Congress people about what we need, we need money. We need access to the federal grants that you put out on, you know, on your website every single quarter of every single year. And you say these are, these are the grants that are available to nonprofit spaces. But guess what? You have to go through so much red tape to get that money. Yes. It's, yeah. it's unimaginable. Yes. It's, you would have to have a genius at grant writing to even write, mm-hmm. understand the language that goes into the grant mm-hmm. writing to write the grant. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then only hold your breath to come out successful because I'm sorry to say this, but there's just not a lot of money getting filtered down to the black community. Yes. Say it again. Ain't no sorry to say it. That's the truth. Yes, ma'am. There's not enough. There's not, not enough. enough support to the black community and nope. i said it yep. at the white house car i said it to them i meant it i left it on the table we need help there's no yep. way you can tell me the average average person the average victim because we're see, like i said we're seeing transgender we're seeing men we're seeing yes. women lbtgq people i mean we're seeing everybody in the space but yet we're not seeing no money yeah and then we we were told it's, it's going to get better by your state representatives, by your local representatives, by, you know, and by your federal government. But then every single time it comes down to where is the money 
And mm -hmm. why are you appropriating appropriating this money to the larger nonprofits who are mm -hmm. doing anything with it? Yes. Yep. Yes. They're not doing anything with right. it. They've been around. They're like dinosaur nonprofits. They've been in the space nothing. forever. They d haven't done any innovative approaches to serve nope. the people they're supposed to service. Where is the money going to? Yes. Like we are new, innovative boots on yep. the ground. We're soldiers. We're in, we're lived experienced soldiers. Half the yes. CEOs in this nonprofit space don't are not even survivors of any. Yes. Of <laughs> you better speak on the, on the news at night. You, you know they get on CNN. They get, yes. they get on um, uh, Nightline. Girl, I was looking at something the other night. Like Nightline, are you serious? Why ain't I on Nightline? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Why, why didn't they come yeah. get me? Yes. You know, somebody tell them what it's like. I want it. Yes. I'm like, get my book. I'm not being heard as I should be. And, yes. and, it, and when I got the opportunity to be heard, oh, they heard it. They heard They heard me loud and clear. And one of the things that, you know, Senator Cory Booker, I love him to death, he, you know, he's trying so hard, so hard to get these reforms made in Congress on or in the Senate to, you know, to stop these abusers once they've convicted yes. in court to stop letting them register weapons. Yes, and, and going back, taking those very weapons and going back and killing them, killing them people. I, I, yeah. say, I say this all the time: when the person that's abusing you tells you he, he or she gonna kill you, you they believe he or she gonna come back will, and kill you. They're gonna try their best. They're gonna wow. try their best. Wow. Now, they they don't we do it. They're they gonna try. We got we a do. lot of work. We got a lot of, but we need to have these people now pay attention to the black community. The black community is exactly. like now we got migrants. We got migrants coming by the busload yes. for the last Ooh. three months into Washington, D.C., by the busload from Texas and Florida. Yes. They just put these people here where we have people already sleeping on streets during hypothermia season. Yes. And they're really getting raped. We, we are overcrowded. Mm. I mean, yes. the shelters mm. are screaming mm. here. We have no more space for these people, but yet they keep putting these people, the migrants, into the space. And I don't have any problem with that. But you cannot take an undocumented migrant and put them into a city where there's already homelessness in the upload of mm -hmm. homelessness. And you have, you have not enough space for domestic violence shelters. You don't have enough space. So everything that's going up around here is not a shelter. Yes. Everything that's going up around in this city, it, it, it's attached to money. It's attached mm -hmm. to wealth. Yes. So I don't, I don't understand when you're telling me like I'm seeing it every day. I'm, I, I can see, I can put my window, you open my window and see it every day being developed. But nothing. Where are we, where are we at with developing um, affordable housing? Yes. We talked about affordable housing for not just you know domestic violence and sexual assault victims. But for everybody yes. who can yeah. afford to remain in the city. Yeah. We we have a lot going on. And, you know. know, the black community, we are the first people that are pushed aside. Yes. You're mm -hmm. always the first people pushed aside. And I have to stop. Yes. Now, let, let me ask <laughs> this question for, okay. for both of you. You guys are doing fantastic work. How do you enlarge you. your platform so that more folks have access to you, your story, and the resources that you both have access to? How do you in, in 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 increase your platform, Tona? So for me, so for me, I have Tona's table that I'm getting ready to. Do. I had, <clears throat> I had surgery over the summer, so I've been taking it easy. But starting this Thursday from six to six thirty, I do Tona's table. I got connected with a wonderful individual that has um, a half a million viewers. Yes. So yeah. that's so that's beneficial. But also doing, I don't turn down a podcast. I don't turn down a time. If I don't care if I'm tired, sick, whatever. I don't turn down the opportunity to either stand on a stage or, speak, or, or be interviewed to talk about it. I wrote a book about it um, that second. And so, and I've given out, and I also wrote a children's book called Say Such as Only Please. And because of donations, we've been able to give out 500 books over, um, over the United States. If they if they came in my inbox, I melted to their home. Yes. I also did the documentary, um, you know, like I said, and we're on the, why didn't we tell them? We're on the second one enough. So my job is to make, a, to, to, to talk as much, to bring it out as much, and not let it be a secret as much, not let it be a, um, a, a, 
something ashamed to talk about anymore. So any opportunity that I get to talk about um, sexual abuse, I am always saying, hello, my name is Tona Buck. I'm a sexual abuse survivor and an advocate because that person who's listening to me who's never told anyone, they know they're not by themselves. And then I have thousands and thousands of parents asking me, how do I um, make, it, make sure this, this don't happen to my child? How about you got to educate them because 80, 89% of us who were victimized were by somebody we knew and we trusted. I'm going to say that again. Mm-hmm. 89% of us who are being victimized, especially in the African-American community, are people that we know and we trust. It's not somebody, it's not a stranger that's coming up into the house, into these households victimizing our children. So it's about education, about educating, and it's about like me, like me, like me. Every every Christmas, I give out hundreds of books. I give those children's books away, yeah, because I need them in the hand. Because if it, 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 we, I, you asked the question. Let me answer that question clearly. I have on the table. I've, like I said, I don't turn down any um, engagement. Um, to speak about it, I do a worldwide sexual assault walk, and it, it grows every year. I want it so big that I want to see millions of people. Kimberly, one of my dreams, and you read my book. I'm not lying to you. In my book, my in the last chapter of my book, I kept saying, I keep saying a sexual assault walk on on, on Washington. Okay. Before I, I'm before I'm I leave this you. earth, I'm, honey, I'm with you. I'm going to see millions of people come together to 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 to. To literally, to literally say enough. I don't care if it's domestic violence, any type of, any type of violence towards individuals like that, sexual, domestic. I needed to be enough, and I swear, as you read my book, that last chapter, I said I keep seeing a vision that I want to be on Washington as a brown and black. So that's what the thing you need to understand too, Kevin. It's important what we do because we are giving brown and black individuals power yes. to talk about. This. Right. That's that's the most important thing that we can do because again, we're not talking about it enough. Yes, I'm finished. Yeah. I would talk forever. <laughs> you know me, Kevin. I, know I can do it three hours by myself. Go yes, ahead, Kimberly. You, <laughs> you got two passionate people on this call, Kevin. I, but, but <laughs> I love listen, it. I love it. I had to do it because you're both powerful so in your own you right. So I'm like, I can't listen. I gotta have you both, right? This I'm only, so glad you did this it. This is the only way I can contain you both. I gotta have you both on the same show at the same time. Come on, talk I, to me. I love it. I love it. It's, it's a beautiful experience. I'm yes, telling it you. Is. Um, yes, yes. But you know, um, I admire what you're saying because, like, um, I'm trying to I'm trying to finish a book yes. on domestic violence. Sexual. Nice. So, um, yes. I am trying to write a Broadway play. Um, y'all pray for me. I've never, yes. I've never been a, a theater, you know, professional to do that. But I think that if you know somebody can write about, you know, uh, what what is this, um, you know, uh, magical myth? Yes. Such as uh, Harry Potter. Yes. I can, I can sure enough. Exactly. We yes. complete, you know, a book about. The real the realizations of life and abuse, yeah. you know. I love um, it. One of the things, uh, you know, we're doing at Women's HQ, we're uh, we're going to be doing a congressional uh, kidding event yes. on Capitol Hill this year. Um, that's to bring the awareness. Um, again, I keep it since I'm here and I'm grounded here in Washington D.C. I got to keep my con- congressional, you know, people engaged yes. with, with the messages. Mission yes. always have to be centered. For them to keep, you know, engaging conversation with me to know that, hey, we got people in New York and New Jersey, you know, San Francisco, all over. We got now we got this energy on this podcast to say, like, we want to see a, you know, a sexual assault walk on Washington. Right. And Washington. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, yeah. that's 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 cute. Yeah, yeah. I want it. I want yeah, it. Yeah. I see we're it. going to get it. Yes, I, I'm claiming it. It's going to happen. And we're going to get it. And um, you know, we, you know, we we are going to be doing. I'm doing the workshop. You know, I'm busy doing that. And now um, we're in our second season of our podcast, which I would love to have you both on. Yes. Uh, we're called the Women's HQ um, YouTube channel, um, Survivors Coffee Circle. Uh, we're into our second season. We you know, kicked off our first season with uh, congressional um, or congressman Jim McGovern from uh, 2nd District out of Massachusetts. Um, 
we're going to have some real. I, I got to keep this under wraps, but we're going to have some real heavy hitters. Yes. On our show, this this on our podcast show this this season. Yes. I'm working real hard. Yes. So we have we have we're going to have some interesting guests, but they're going to be not just talking about what they can help with and what they can do. We have people. We have. I don't even. I, I don't even know if people know. I'm just that excited that there are people in the entertainment business yes. that have been through sexual assault. Yes, yes ma'am. Domestic violence. Yes. And now want to be heard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I found these folks. They now want to be heard. So I think it's important, too, in our line of business that we have people that have that platform. That You know, they yeah. have, they, uh, you know, I'm not a celebrity. No, I'm not a sports. I'm not a sports. You know, uh, athlete, professional athlete. I'm not none of that. But I am me, and yes. I, I've lived this. I've walked this, and I mean this. Yes. We are going to get this work done. This yes. is a mission that has been gone far too long. Decades, decades, mm-hmm. decades, decades, decades. Like when our parents was keeping it in the house, yeah, letting it out the door. We now open the door, and we say enough is enough. Yes. Uh, that's so, and Women's HQ, I just, we have our new website up. We're at www.womenshq, W O N E N S H is in Harry, Q is in Porter, dot org. Yes. And uh, yeah, I we 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 will be in a lot more publications this year too. So we got a lot of good things coming up. Oh, and I, my hey. survivor sister, I'm with you. I'm with Let's you. Let's go. Wow. Listen, man, we going to talk about this. Well, listen, you guys, you guys have each other's names and numbers and through the text yeah. message, you know, just connect, right? Because I think that uh, I have put you, Kimberly, in touch with uh, Keisha, right? Yes. This might yes. be, this, I'm putting Keisha on blast. So, Keisha, I'm putting you on blast. <laughs> So this might be a, a good time to circle back around with her, cause she's Miss DMV, and she can Not she can that. help she can help raise your cause and your awareness, right? For for right. domestic for domestic violence being a survivor of such, right? This is fantastic. Yeah. So for us, it's the podcast. We're telling the unabridged story. We're trying to connect the dots, and we're trying to connect people because I love the work that you entrepreneurs are doing. This is fantastic, right? But I, you know, you know what also works, Kevin. Yes, we have to now have partnerships. Yes, yeah. I keep telling people these big companies, the big, the big companies, the not other, and, and by God, the other nonprofits. Like I said, the dinosaur nonprofits. Yes, you, mm-hmm. you have to relinquish that after COVID, post COVID. There's no more of this. You know, oh, I'm gonna work over here. You work over there. You get that money. I get this part of money. No, we have to work in tangent with one another yes. to get what we need. Because yeah. every not one single nonprofit, not one single company, not one single agency, not one single government can do it all. Very true. They can't, yeah. they can't do it all. It's just mass we have masses and masses of violence in this country yes. today. Like no one in no one entity and no one individual can do it all. Yes. Yeah. So one of the things I've learned at this White House conference is we have to come together as a community. Yes. But we have to get to know each other in our community. Yes. We have to make sure that we invest in our community. You know, don't just walk away from your community and don't yes. get lost. Yes. Go yes. back to your community and see what needs to be uplifted. See the people that are working hard every day and night and wanting to meet, meet the needs of the people that that still reside there. Yes. I mean, yes. my God, you're leaving you're leaving you're leaving devastation behind. Yes. California. Look at California right now. California is just washing away. Yes. Washing yeah. away. So now they had to put celebrities on there to let you know how bad it is and how they have to evacuate immediately from their own. Yes. Their multi million dollar yeah. own. Yes. Like yeah. I think we were all put here by the grace of God to meet his mission. Yes. And yeah. if we're not going to do that, we're not then nothing's going to get done. Yes. Because he means that. <laughs> Not that I will put this world at a standstill yes. before I I I see you to be divided, mm-hmm. and we just we need to believe in that more and more. Yes, and, and I, you know, one thing that I appreciate, and I'm gonna be finished, Kevin. One thing that I do appreciate about um, survivors is that 
if you are a survivor and you can turn that pain into your passion and your passion to your purpose, you can help change the world one person at a time. Man. Kevin, I appreciate you, first of all, because you said, <laughs> how do we get it on? You know, yes, I love sir. the staff, and I appreciate you allowing us to have this platform because yes. many people don't want to touch it, right? Yes. So I appreciate all that you do for the community. You know, we're still in Trenton trying to make things happen, yes. but not just in Trenton, worldwide. Absolutely. We're trying to make things happen. Absolutely. And I always say, if you can touch one person, one person, we've done a great job. Yes. Yes. So listen, before before we leave, I want you 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 find fantastic young ladies. Just give me three takeaways as to how people can be better with moving through and surviving domestic violence and being a rape survivor. How can, three takeaways as to how they can be better? Okay, I, I, number one, is no, it's not your fault. Number two. You are not by yourself. Yeah. And number three, I promise you, you can take your pain and turn it into your passion and turn it into your purpose. There is healing. Yes. There is healing for your soul. And don't let that person have power over you. Not one more minute. Yes. Yes. Kimberly? Yes. Yeah, stay, stay, stay with the purpose. Yes. Know that you're loved. Know that you're worthy. And know that you are the queen and king of everything God created you to be. Yes. Love it. Yes. Can we want we want we want to connect? Thank you, Kevin. Ladies, I want to thank you. Keep me listen. Thank if there's you. anything that the entrepreneur enclave can do to move your mission and your vision forward, please don't help. Uh, please don't hesitate. I want you to come to Washington D.C. and I want you to. A live podcast on my congressional kidding event. Well, li- listen, I'm I'm, okay. I'm 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 planning to get there. I was trying to get there because I wanted to do uh, cigars and dinner with you guys. So I'm I'm it's, it's on my radar to come there because there's a few other people. And make sure you start you, you, you grab me up too. let's go let's go all right ladies all right we're gonna stay connected but keep me posted with everything that you guys are doing and continue success and god's blessings thank you thank you i look forward to working with you you too okay bye thank you kevin we'll talk to you soon thank you ladies (laughs) bye-bye that concludes another episode of the Entrepreneurial Enclave with Kevin Wortham. The podcast that focuses on building, maintaining, pivoting, planning, and investing in you, the entrepreneur. We hope you found this episode informative and enlightening. If you have any questions or comments about any of our episodes, please call 609 731 9311 or email Kevin at minding our business.com. We look forward to joining us for our next one. Until next time.